worship the God who is good and working. If that's you, let me hear you give him some glory this morning. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't we remind the world this week that the church is not dead or dying. It is alive and moving and thriving by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody tell your neighbor, I'm alive. Listen, the Spirit of God is alive in you and has put everything you need this week inside of you. Nothing is lacking right now. Don't believe the enemy that something is lacking. You can't, you won't, you're not enough. You don't know how to do it. You don't know what it takes. All of that's a lie. It's all built in through the Holy Spirit inside of you. You have what it takes for this week. Somebody say, I receive it. Praise God. Take your seat. I'm going to jump into the Word. I got a fun topic this morning. You ready? If you're taking notes, get them ready. If you're turning in your Bible, turn to Revelation chapter 12. Title for this morning. You ready? ready. Two of you. I'm, I'm ready. Two of you. It says, Well, there's two or more. <laughs> That's all I need. How to beat the devil. How to beat the devil. All right? Come on. I'm going to keep it PG. Maybe even G. How to beat the devil. Here's the thing. I don't know about you. I'm saying chew, like C-H-O-O. I don't know about you, but for me, I've kinda, I'm kind of done with letting the enemy just do whatever he wants. I want to cling to what the Word of God says in His Word and His promises. I want to know what is true, and I want to see the victory that I know I have actually happening in my life. I don't want to wait. I'm not waiting until we die and get to eternity, and then when we get there, things will be better. I want to live. I know that's coming. I want to live in victory now, and I know this too. If Jesus already came, and his life was willingly and freely given on the cross that I might have victory in Christ, then I already won. We've already stand in victory over the enemy. So when I say how to beat the devil, I'm not like, okay, this is what you need to do so that you can win over the devil. It's like, we've already won. What I want to talk about this morning is how do we celebrate that victory in such a way that we don't go back. You can go back to your sin. You can go back to your past. It says in scripture, like a dog returns to its vomit, so a man can return back to his sin. I don't want to be that guy. Neither do you. I already know it. So let's look at the Word of God this morning, and let's take the right stance we can in victory over the enemy. Amen? Revelation chapter 12. There we go. Preach, preacher. Call Kirk, somebody. Starting in verse 7. Now war arose in heaven. Michael and his angels were fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was defeated, and there was no longer a place for him in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now, somebody say now. Now, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers have been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by what? By the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they love not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, for you shall dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea. For the devil has come down to you in great wrath because he knows that his time is short. How to beat the devil. You've already won. Just stand in your rightful place. 
I want you to see that there was a war that took place in the heavens, in the cosmics. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, it says. There was a war that took place, and in that war, the enemy, Satan, was defeated and cast down out of heaven. Why was he defeated? He was defeated because God is greater than him. He's cast down, and when he's cast down, it doesn't say, all right, buddy, have your way, do whatever you want. Good luck, people. No. He's cast down, and as he's cast down, a voice in heaven thunders and says, now is the salvation and the power and the kingdom and the authority. It has come because of Christ the Savior. Does anyone know Christ the Savior? Then let me tell you what. Then you know about the kingdom. You know about the power. You know about the saving grace and the authority that comes with that. We're not here to be beat up by Satan for 50, 60, 70 years, however long we live. And then to one day make it on the other side with Jesus. We are here to be more than conquerors. We are here to be victors. We are here because we have been chosen by God that we might be his voice piece, that we might be the light on a hill to win the loss that they too can know. Don't sit around and be bullied by the devil and let your life be beat up and thrown around and whatever happens, happens. But instead, know the saving power of Jesus Christ. Know about the life transforming goodness that God can give. But there's two ingredients that come from this. The first one is what Jesus has already done. This is that Jesus willingly gave his life on the cross. That's the blood we're talking about. It says salvation and power and authority and whatever else it says in there. That comes because, one, Jesus poured out his blood, not for some, not for the ones he likes, not for the best, for everyone. For everyone. This is why you can never convince me to be a Calvinist. Jesus loves everybody. It's not for some. It's for all. For every person walking around, anybody that ever lived, that ever will live, he gave his life for them. That his blood might cover us, and when God looks upon us, he doesn't see spot, blemish, sin, or past. He sees the righteousness of the blood of Christ, because it was poured out for everyone. Even for you, even for me, don't let for a second your mind think, well, it was for them, but not for me. It could never cover my sins. I've been too bad. You couldn't be too bad. There's no such thing as too bad, too far, too gone, too sinful, too wicked. He can save the least, the lost, and the most. It doesn't matter what. That blood covers all. Someone say it covers it. That's the first ingredient. There's two ingredients to... Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> Better them than me. I got the mic on my hand. I don't think how loud that would be. There's two ingredients. The first one is the blood of Christ. And knowing about it is not enough. I talked to a, I think it was a Muslim man this week. I said, do you know Jesus? He said, yeah, I know Jesus. I said, do you follow him? He said, well, I know him because he was one of the prophets. And I was like, no, man, he wasn't one of the prophets. He's the, the savior. You know, we had a little chat where we disagreed, but it was friendly. When it ended, I gave him one of my Jesus save cards, but he did not give me one of his whatever he has cards. <laughs> so, let you know who won. If you were wondering, if you were wondering who won that, and I'm just kidding, there was no winning. I was just wanted him to know about Jesus. And he politely declined for the moment. Who knows what could happen later, though, right? Yeah. Seeds planted. Some one waters, another sows. One gets to harvest. So maybe one of you will run into him this week. Win him for Jesus. There's a difference between knowing about or knowing Jesus. 
and following Jesus as Savior and King. You can know about him, that he existed in history, that there was a time and place that Jesus was and then he wasn't. You can know all of that, but that's not going to bring you power in your life. What brings power is knowing not just him, but that he's your Savior and your King. And this is when the blood of Christ collides with your life and it gives opportunity for the second ingredient to exist. And that is a testimony. A testimony comes only from knowing Christ, and a testimony is not about something lucky that happened to you or something good that happened to you. It is the collision when Christ's blood comes into your life and change is activated in that moment, and you go from being lost to saved in the blink of an eye, and that is your testimony. Now, it can be wrapped in many different ways. You can testify about this, testify about that, you know, God did this, God did my life, you know, like, he freed me from that. There can, be, there can be so many variations of this testimony, but at the end of the day, it is your testimony that becomes the second ingredient to activating this power that kicks the devil's butt. I can say butt. I asked the nine, I said, which one's better, butt or booty? The answer was obvious by the laughter. It kicks the devil's booty. See, it doesn't work the same, all right? Even when you try, it's just got to be butt. Bottom, I, I tried that. doesn't work either. It kicks the devil's bottom. Like, no, it's just not it, right? Rear. Okay, I'm just going to stop. But it's not just the blood alone. And it's not just... The testimony alone, because without the blood, there's no testimony. It's these two coming together which activate salvation and power and authority in the kingdom of God. And that is why so many people are losing little battles. I'm going to call them little because the big battle has been won. I'm not making small of whatever battle you're going through, all right? That is why people are losing these smaller battles, these momentary, even 10-year-long, losing these 10-year, 20-year-long battles because they've forgotten that it's not by force, it's not by might, it's not by wanting to. It is by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. And when you speak up with your word and testify to the goodness of God, then breakthrough begins to happen in and around you. I've never found anyone that testifies to the goodness of God in lifestyle that doesn't walk in the power of God. If you want to know how to do it, then testify to the goodness. Well, I just don't know. Listen, what do you know? What do you know? You know one verse? You know one word? Do you know Jesus? He changed me. Boom. That's all you need. Jesus changed me. You're good enough now. Get out there and do it. You don't need the degree. You don't need the extra course. You don't need the extra training. Just get out there and tell yourself, the next person I see, I'm going to ask him about Jesus. I'm going to tell him about Jesus. And then just do it. Let the testimony roll out of your mouth. Let it roll out of your life. Let it not just be your actions. Let it be your actions and your words that are testifying to the goodness of God. Because what the enemy is trying to do is he's trying to rob you from your rightful place in the kingdom of God. And he won't do it. The schemes of the devil have had enough. I went to the mall this week with my family. I wore my Demons Got to Go shirt because I believe in it. Demons Got to Go. Some of you have that shirt. I wear mine a lot. I try to wear it a lot to the mall. <laughs> I don't got to tell you why. So I go into the mall. You're just raining outside. I park at the Dillard's because, you know, you don't get wet when you park at the Dillard's. I walk in, you know, this little fun fact there. And you don't want to go to the other one by the bowling, whatever they call it, in the AMC, because that one's just like, honestly, it looks like where people go to, for bad things to happen. There's two sides of the mall, okay? Just breaking it down for you real, right? In the past, when they've had, when they've had bad stuff happen, it, you don't ever hear, it was in the Dillard's parking lot. No, it's on the other side, okay? So we go to the Dillard's parking lot, we pull in, we walk in. As soon as you walk out of the Dillard's, there's the, there's the cookie store there. So with my family, so we've got to get cookies, okay? So we got three cookies. I'm not going to tell you which three of them got the cookies. But anyways, 
So then we go to the pretzel place. While they're getting the cookies, I'm getting the pretzel because, you know, we all got to get our snacks. So I get my pretzel at uh, Wetzel's, the second best pretzel place in the mall. But it's close. It's like right nearby, so I got to settle for number two. But anything over Auntie Anne's, don't be fooled, okay? Just because you've been around longer doesn't mean you're better. Everybody knows that, all right? I know Christians, Christians have been Christians for 50 years. They still don't know how to pray, okay? I know Christians have been Christians for 50 minutes, and they're over here praying in tongues, all right? Okay. So I go over there. I get my pretzel, <clears throat> talking to the guy, and I'm ministering to him and whatnot. And, and so I ask him, like, hey, man, like, do you know Jesus? And he's like, I'm an atheist. It's, by the way, there's no such thing. I'm convinced. And so, because when you ask someone, like, are you a Christian, like, the basis is, like, do you know Jesus? If you ask someone, are you an atheist, they don't even know what an atheist is. They're just, like, they just don't want to engage emotionally in religion or faith. So, like, I'm an atheist. All right, whatever. And so I was, like, I always ask them, like, what does that, when you say that, what does that mean? And they'll say something like, oh, I don't believe in any higher power, or, you know, whatever, like that. I'm, like, okay, well, I do. Higher power is Jesus. You know, I'll talk to them because, you know. And so I'm talking to him. We're having a friendly conversation, and. You know, he's got his two atheist buddies behind him, and I don't want to, like, expose his fact that atheism's not real, you know, make him feel all bad and cry and stuff. And so I'm just being real nice, and I order my pretzel, and we get the lemonade and the whole thing, and <clears throat> we end it. And I'm like, all right, man, have a great night. I'll see you later. And I'm, I'm about to say one more thing, and he pipes up, and he says, he says, all right, bless you. Bless me with what? You don't believe in anything. You don't even believe in karma. You can't. You, no higher power. There's nothing. You can't believe in nothing, all right? If you find a coin on the ground, it was just because it was on the ground. There's not even luck. You don't even have luck, okay? No skill. If you make a half-court shot, gravity did the work, okay? Because there's, I mean, gravity is a higher power, I guess. No, you can't even have that, yeah. They're in big trouble, okay, these atheists. I don't know how they're, I don't know how they're breathing, okay? You can't believe in air. He says, bless me. And I'm like... I'm taking back. I didn't want to say, by who? Well, I just said, thank you. God bless you, you know, and just like we had our little moment and we left. So I'm walking around, I'm like, this is so bizarre. I'm walking around later, I got my demon shirt on, and <clears throat> that's what I call it. You understand, though. <laughs> Demon's got to go. Yeah. Ta-da! And so I'm walking around, this guy's like, hey, man, I love that shirt. And I'm like, you know, people tell me that all the time about everything about me. No, I'm just kidding. About our authentic merch. <laughs> I'm just kidding. About our authentic merch. And I'm like, oh, man, thanks so much. And he's like, I want one. And I, I'm like, oh, dude, they're all sold out. You know, they always sell out because they're so legit and awesome. And, and I'm like, but hey, hey, take this card. I give him a card. I'm like, hey, look us up, man. We'll get, you know, get you a shirt. And so we're standing there, and we're in the middle of the mall. And he's got his family, and I got my family. And he's talking about my shirt. And so I'm like, yeah, man, I'm going to shoot my shot. I'm like, so do you know Jesus? Are you a Christian? And he was like, oh, no, 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 man. And I'm like. I'm, I've never had that answer before because everyone who likes my demon shirt is 100% before this a believer. This is my first non-believer complimenting my demon shirt. And I'm like, you know what says demons got to go, not demons got to flow, right? Check out my shirt, I got the right shirt on, you know, like. And he's like, oh yeah, man, I just, I just love the shirt. It's just a cool shirt. And I'm like, this is bizarre. But then I realized even lost people don't want demons. Nobody wants the devil to actually win in their life. The only people pretending like they want the devil to win is the ones who the devil has lied to and promised that they'll get something good out of it. And they won't. Even lost people are hoping that they can be set free from the power of the enemy. But the only way it can happen is if we speak up by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. See, there's something inside of you that can release them from demonic stronghold in an instant. And how could we hold that in? How could we hold that back? How could we decide today, oh, I'm just too busy, I'm just too worried, I'm just too concerned. I know that I'm speaking to a church this morning that is positioned to walk and move, not just sit in and hear, and be like, oh, that was really great. Oh, thanks so much for that. I was so, oh, praise God. But to actually live in and do the things of God. And when we say preach the gospel, they preach the gospel. 
When we say speak up and share your testimony, we got, we got students this week in their schools, in high school, sharing the gospel. We heard a testimony this week, this morning. Young ladies, you're like, I felt like I need to share the gospel. I went up to someone. Listen, when you're in high school and you're sharing Jesus, like, you're, you could be just setting yourself up, okay, for some great stuff or some bad stuff, all right? I remember one time I was in high school. I went to a private school. And I was worshiping in the chapel, raising my hands. And someone came over, a teacher came over to me and said, I need you to put your hands down. You're being distracting. So I stood up and put both hands up and told the Lord, I won't drop them until they're done. Don't let my hands get tired. Should be a distraction. <laughs> I don't know. Forgive her, I guess, right? I'm fine with it. It doesn't put any trauma on me. Don't worry. I'm good. And this high school girl went up to one of, her, one of, the, one of the, her classmates and shared the gospel with him. She was like, man, I really hope they don't say no and share the gospel. And it was earlier in the week. And they said, no, no thanks. Which, if you haven't got a no yet, you're not sharing the gospel, right? Because <laughs> people are crazy. They think they got it already. They don't got it. They, so they get a no. Well, guess what? She doesn't quit. She shares again another time. And they say yes. And they accept Jesus and a new person's following Jesus because of someone else's boldness, someone else's confession of the testimony. And that can be you this week. That can be you today, and it should be. Even the lost people don't want the demons. Let's help them. Because the power is inside of us to do it. Through the Spirit. Through the Spirit, the work of the enemy becomes an ant under your boot. How scared is your boot of ants? Not just stomp on one and move on. I killed an ant. We, had, we were playing outside, and there was a little ant on our sidewalk. And I'm not like going around like killing ants, okay? <laughs> Though I'm not opposed to it either. But like me and my boys are there, and I just don't want like one stray ant to like run up and, you know, bite my little tasty kids, you know, and so I just take my finger and I'm like, oh, look, it's an ant. It's a big old ant. I take my finger and I just, you know, like guts, I just squish him right there. Well, he's gone. He's a goner. And, you know, my kid is like, oh, wow, like, so impressed because ants bite him. But I kill ants, you know, it's like, and that's just with my finger. Like, I I wasn't like, oh no, what's going to happen? It's not an ant pile, it's an ant. And we forget the power and authority we have over every dark place. And so we go in, shaking, thinking, oh, I don't know, I don't know. You know, it's inside of you. It's been predestined and preordained. That's what's predestined and preordained, I'll tell you that. Free will, predestination, whatever. That God wins. That the blood of Jesus washes away every sin. That's been predecided and put inside of you. So why walk around wondering if you're going to win or if you're going to lose? I was teaching our Monday night Bible study called Authentic Essentials this last Monday night. Come on, baby. Yeah. And a lot of you were there. We had record attendance. Our highest one we've ever had, we had over 100 people at this Bible study. Praise God. Which is, in, I mean, 100 people, is, it's not like it, maybe it's not a million, but hey, we're going somewhere. But it, it's cool because we started it with 12, you know? And so to see it grow, and even last year, one year ago, I think our high attendance number was like 60, you know? So we had, we had grown all the way to 60 one year ago. And so to see that double in a year is pretty exciting. Anyway, so we were on our first one. Authentic Essentials, and we're studying Habakkuk, Habakkuk, and it's one of the minor prophets, okay? And I just, that the reason they call them minor prophets is because of the size of the book. Huh. Who would have thought that, you know? I thought they were like little tiny ones. <laughs> they weren't. We were studying Habakkuk, so it was a fun time. We got really far along in it. We got to verse 3, <laughs> studying verse by verse Habakkuk. So if you, missed the, if you missed it and you want to come, 
Let us know, RSVP, there's a dinner. We want to make sure we can have enough food for you. It's not happening tomorrow. It's happening next week, okay? So you have a whole week to cancel your plans on whoever didn't want to see you anyways and come hang out with us because we want to see you. And we'll study Habakkuk together. But in Habakkuk, one little piece I'll give you is his name, the name Habakkuk, means to embrace, to embrace. And he does, I believe, such an incredible job as a prophet embracing where God has him. And studying this way before has put this phrase in my heart, which I've used before at Authentic and shared with some people in like leadership trainings and things, which is like this. Embrace your place. Embrace your place. And a fast way to remind the devil that you beat him and you'll beat him over and over again, no matter how much he tries, is when we embrace our place. Now, here's the thing. He's constantly trying to convince us that our place is somewhere else. So, I mean, look at it. We, we're, we're on social media. We're trying to live in a different world. They got people walking around or whatever they're doing with, like, VR goggles and Google Glass and stuff. And it's like, I'm like, you're in a cabin eating popcorn with your friend, but you're not. You're at home. You know, in a different world, and you, you're, you're people like, we want to live in the past. Everyone who wronged me, all of my hurt, like, I'm all just, oh, I can't ever get over it. I can't get past it. I, I, I'm abused. I'm a victim. I'm, I'm, I'm wounded. We want to live in the future. Like, oh, what could it be like? It could be greater. It could be better. Maybe it could be worse. Anxiety, stress, depression, I mean, all of it. We're living anywhere except for where God actually has us. That's why I say embrace your place, because there's a place God has for you right now, today, this month, this year, in this season, and that place, from there, God's anointing flows. But from the past, his anointing doesn't flow. He's a God living right now. He doesn't say, I was. He says, I am. He doesn't say, I will be. He says, I am. He's the God of the right now. So I encourage you this morning on that, one, come to Authentic Essentials, we'll study the Word of God together. But I encourage you this morning with that phrase, embrace your place. Because from that place flows the freedom that you and those around you need. Now let me help align you to your place, all right? Your, your embracing your place is not saying, well, my diagnosis is cancer, so I'm going to embrace that. You can if you want, but that's not your place that scripture has for you. Well, my, my marriage is just on the rocks. I just have to embrace that. No, you don't have to embrace that. Well, my loved one isn't following Jesus. I just got to embrace that. No, you don't have to embrace that. My life is chaotic right now. I don't have any friends. I just got to embrace that. No, no, that's not embracing your place. That's embracing the enemy's place he lied to you about. Embracing your place is saying, Doc, I hear the diagnosis, but I also know that my God is the healer. Embracing your place decides, cancer, you're not going to have the final word on me. I'm going to have the final word on you. You're going to run for me. I'm not running from you. This is my place. This is where God placed me, in a place of freedom and healing and blessing, not in a place of suffering. I embrace my place. Not embracing my place on what the world has for me. I embrace my place on what God has for me. I embrace the place where the blood of the Lamb, that's the blood of Jesus, meets my life and creates testimony to take forth. So I know if that's my diagnosis, it's not for the, my demise, it's for my testimony. If that's my report, it's not to break me down, it's to build me up. I know what I'm here to do and who I'm here to be. And the word is getting out right now from the people of Authentic. That God is a miracle working God and he's moving through the people that are right here. So don't be surprised this week when you get calls of people that want to pray with you, when, when they're asking you to come visit them, when they need you. Don't be surprised and don't put them off because they need the testimony that's inside of you to unlock something inside of them. They need to learn how to embrace the rightful place that God has called them to do and not the wrong place the enemy is calling them into. I got an email and a phone call this week, two in one week, asking me to go visit two different people that I don't know that have stage four cancer. Because God's been healing people of stage four cancer at Authentic. 
and cancer in general. So I got an email from this lady. She came and visited a couple times, and she's like, my husband's in the hospital. Will you visit him? And what I found out was that he's had cancer for about seven years. But it's not that there's like a good cancer, but it's the kind of cancer that they're like, oh, yeah, we got this under control. You know, a little bit of surgery here and there, a little bit of taking some, some of this out here and there, like just some pills, like nothing crazy, and you're going to be just fine. It's all good. And that's kind of been going for like seven years. Well, he started feeling sick. He went for one of his checkups, and they're like, oh, buddy, we're so sorry. This is not good. You have just, you have just expedited to stage four cancer, and instead of there being little masses on you, it is now eating holes inside of the inside of your body. So they, he went to the hospital at the weekend, last weekend, and they said, you can't leave. You have to stay. You're, you're going to die. we got to figure out what we're going to do. So she emails us at the start of the week, says, can you go? So on Tuesday at morning, I go as soon as I could. And I'm not going to comfort this man and tell him God loves him no matter what happens. That's not my assignment. If that's your assignment, that's fine. My assignment is to go that the power to heal would be on me. I would touch this man, and he would recover in Jesus' name. That's my assignment. So me and Pastor Abdel, we went into the hospital to pray with this man. So we go on the oncology floor. We find out. I've, I've learned a lot about hospitals in the last couple of years. I can really move around one, you know. I used to be like a, a fish out of water in the hospital. I didn't even want to go. You couldn't drag me to a hospital. I was like, no way, man. Like, I don't want to go. I didn't want to visit anyone that was sick. I just felt uncomfortable there. But now I go, and I feel like, man, I'm here on purpose. Like, I'm here to do something, you know. So I'm walking in, and we, we go. We don't know this guy. We never met him. We go to find him, and we're, we're, we, we, we find him. We walk in, and as, when I walk in, I got my anointing oil with me, and I'm ready to pray for him. And he already has his authentic anointing oil bottle that his wife brought him, I guess, on his little desk right there in the hospital room. And I walk in and I ask him, we ta start talking, I, I need to ask him the most important question because I don't have time to waste on it, neither does he. And so I say, do you believe God will heal you supernaturally? He's like, yes. All right, great, let's pray. So we pray right there, I anoint him with oil, we pray, we read the scriptures together, he shows me some scriptures that he's claiming over his life. Why? Because he wants to embrace his rightful place. While we're in there praying, the nurse comes in because, you know, if you're like one guy in the hospital room and two bearded guys walk in, they should be concerned, right? And the floor is like, is, is the, the emotional energy on the floor is, is like horrible because no one there is having a good time. How could they? This is not a good place. But, you know, AJ and me, we're walking in and we're like beep bopping, you know what I'm saying? Healed. Because we know what we're there to do. So I'm not letting the like, emotional energy of the floor change what my assignment is there to be. I'm filled with joy. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm there to heal people. Okay? So we were very sus. So the nurse came in and she was like piddling, you know, with something. She's like, I got to come change the uh, vein plug drain er. I'm like, ah, oh, that's not a thing. So she's just like winding up some cords unwinding some other cords while she's just kind of spying on us to see are we like selling this guy some, you know, taking his money or something. I don't know what you thought we were doing. Or we were, yeah, selling him some life insurance or whatever. I don't know, man. <laughs> I was selling him some healing and it cost zero dollars. All faith. So on the way out, you know, I'm, I'm there. I'm in the mode. And so we're walking down and this lady is walking down and she seems like she's having a horrible day. And so I was like, hey, how you doing? She's like, not that great. I said, why are you here? Which is I mean, a pretty good indication, right? She's like, oh, my husband has cancer. And I was like, oh, man, how is it? She's like, it's terrible, stage four, it's everywhere, and the whole thing. And I was like, well, we're here praying for people. Do you want us to go pray for him? And she's like, oh, he really wouldn't like that. And I'm like, okay, well. She said, plus, the priest already came by. I couldn't help myself, so please forgive me. I said, does your priest see miracles happen? And she's kind of like, uh, 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 and I'm like, no. So I'm like, man, we could see a miracle happen. And she's like, oh, I just don't know. Like, so I pull, I had the anointing bottle anyways, because the other guy already had one and I had hang, hung on to it. And so I said, here, listen, this is a bottle of anointing oil. Let me give it to you. Let me anoint you. 
you, you're not gonna let, he's not going to let me come up there. Why don't you go up there and you lay hands on him and you tell him that he's healed? God will do it. And she's looking at me like, sir, I'm trying to go to the cafeteria. You're an insane person. But what if she does? I'm not going to, I don't know that I'll ever see her again. I don't know that I'll go back there again. I don't know if I'll have that moment again. This is my moment to, to do what God put in my heart. And so I, I hand her the oil. I pray with her fast. She thinks we're both crazy. But maybe that's what it takes for two crazy guys to be like, hey, why don't you pray for your husband and declare he's healed? And maybe this week they already walked out and they're already healed. They're like, who was that guy? We don't even know. I don't know what happens, but my assignment is not to carry out God's end work of what he's going to do. My assignment is to be obedient in the place that he's called me to be. And if he says to pray, if he says to preach, if he says to move, that's what I, I can only embrace my place. I can't embrace his place and I can't embrace your place. I can only embrace my place. So we pray and we believe for a miracle and we walk out. And fun fact, when we were walking up, AJ's crazier than me, all right? When we were walking up, we were like trying to find the right door. And there was this one set of doors. And in the biggest letters, in like such large print, it said, doors locked, use other door, do not enter. And so I get like 20 feet, and I'm like, ah, oh, doors locked. And he goes, no, man, not for you. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, not for me. You're right. Because there was like doors like 100 feet or 200 feet down that way. And I was like, what's it going to hurt? And so I start walking up. Those doors open up. <laughs> I don't think they were supposed to. And we're like, you know, walking in the back halls of the hospital. I'm like, this is crazy. And it was anyways. It was crazy. So I took a video of it. So don't be surprised if, it, if it's out there on the internet machine and you find it. You know, on the Institute, if it's out there. Let me take you to Matthew chapter 4. Somebody say, embrace your place. Your place is not sickness. Your place is not pain. Your place is not your past trauma. Your place is with Jesus in a place of God's presence. That's your place. Matthew chapter 4, starting in verse 1. There's three times in Scripture where the devil comes after somebody. All right? So when I say we're going to beat the devil, we're beating the, the enemies of the devil. I don't know that, that any of us are, are the ones that he's, that he's like specifically coming after. But he is sending his demons. Okay, don't be confused. Eve in the garden, Job, when the devil asked for permission to attack Job, and uh, Jesus. We're about to read it right now. So when people are like, the devil's attacking me, be like, oh, well, I mean, he sent like a, like a low-grade messenger maybe, you know? So just stomp on him and move on. Okay? If you already defeated the devil, then what are you concerned about his little, his little peons? You know, it's like not a big deal. Just beat it and move. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness... Not the place you thought he was going to be led. Maybe like into a palace, into a place of comfort. This is Jesus we're talking about. And all of us want to be led by the Spirit. But remember where the Spirit led Jesus. The wilderness. To be tempted by the devil. Looking pretty bleak. Then after 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, he was hungry. Anybody fasted recently? Were you hungry? And the tempter came to him and said, If you're the Son of God, command these stones to be turned into loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him up on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you're the Son of God... Throw yourself down, for it's written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest your foot strikes against a stone. The devil comes and tempts Jesus. Jesus quotes scripture. The devil quotes scripture back. Don't think he don't know it. He'll take it, he'll mend it, he'll mix it, he'll twist it, he'll turn it, bop it. What else do you do to it? You played it. He'll do whatever he can to get you confused about where your rightful place is. Listen, he's talking to Jesus and he's saying, hey, if you're really the son of God, if your rightful place is really at the right hand of the Father, then prove it by doing what? Turning this bread. 
jumping off this building. You won't fall. You're the son of God. He can't afford to waste this mission. If you're really, if you're really, no, no, you look him right back in the eyes and you say, really, Satan? I am everything that God says I am. I embrace my place. I don't need to prove to someone else where I need to be. I don't need to find some other place to be. I'm going to be who God made me to be right in the middle of whatever I'm in because I know wherever I'm at, I won't stay there. I'll keep going up and up and forward and forward. That's a promise from the Word of God. From glory to glory. The head and not the tail. Don't forget what the Word of God says. That, his, that He will go before you and behind you. That no weapon formed against you shall what? So why believe the lies of the devil? Why let the enemy beat you with words when you already have the word inside of you? Jesus said to him, it's written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Listen, there are kingdoms of this world and there are glory. there is glory of this world. Don't take it. You don't want it. You want the glory that comes from God. You want the eternal glory. You want God's glory to be going through you. You don't want to have the glory of man. And he said to him, as he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me, then Jesus said to him, put this one in your bank for this week. Be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and only him shall you serve. Listen, I embrace my place and the best way to embrace my place is with praise to the almighty king. I'm going to worship God and him alone shall I worship. And Satan already knows, he's, he's realized the, the worst truth, that any area of our life that we don't let God have praise will turn into pride. And when it turns into pride, we're worshiping something else other than God. And that's not where we want to be. If you're doing well, give God praise. If you're going through the hard time, give God praise. Let it be the testimony of what you do. I, like I said before, I've never found anyone that knows how to give God praise that has to just keep struggling and keep struggling and keep struggling. Break free from the cycle of learning the same lessons over and over again. Why keep making the same financial mistake? Why keep being broke all the time? Why accept a poverty mindset? Why accept that you're going to struggle? When you know that God has called us to prosper in every way. So why let that cycle keep going? Break free with your praise embrace the place that you're supposed to be in and claim it no this is my place if I am a child of God tell the devil be gone I'm a child of God if I am really saved tell the devil be gone I am saved then the devil left him Verse 11, then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. You don't know what's going to happen next. And sometimes we're in a place where it feels like we can embrace the things of God or we can embrace the things of the world. And it feels like if we embrace the things of God, who knows how long it could take. But if we embrace the things of the world hey, it'll go faster and be better and we'll be happier quicker. But it's not true because you don't know what's coming next. And when you tell Satan, be gone, Satan, you don't know how quickly those angels are going to come and minister to unto us. You don't know how quickly that joy and peace is going to come right into our heart. You don't know how quickly that financial breakthrough can happen in your life. You don't know how quick that healing can just take place in your body because you told yourself, I know where my place is going to be and it's not going to be dying and sick and just falling apart. It's going to be living and preaching the things of God. Thank you, Lord, for a healthy body, and I'm going to walk forward in it. You don't know how quick it can happen when you choose to embrace the things of God. I know this, that advance almost always equals attack. Advance equals attack. 
When I decide to advance in the kingdom of God, the enemy decides to bring attack towards me. But you know what flows? When advance brings attack, you know what attack brings? Anointing. Don't forget that last piece. Because advance doesn't bring just attack and now I'm just under attack. It brings anointing to break that attack and go to the next advance. Anointing to break that attack and go to the next advance. Anointing to break that attack and go to the next advance. That anointing keeps me, though I might be under attack, it reminds me that that attack is under my feet, not raining down on my head. That attack is making me more like Christ, not breaking me away from the things of God. That attack is releasing anointing in my life that will set captives free all around me. People say, new levels, new devils. I say, New levels, no devils. Why, why go ahead and claim over my life that as I move forward, things will just get harder? No, I've been trained. As I move forward, what seemed hard before will be easier moving forward. As I move forward, the devil is going to give up and know that I'm one of the Jobs, that I'm one of the ones that said, God, I'll serve you when I lose my friends and everything else around. I'm going to keep going. So go ahead and give up. Try somebody else. Go try the church down the street. Go try the people on the other side of town. Because at this side, we're living for Jesus us sold out all in and we embrace the place that God has for us I know I'm not looking at Sunday Christians I'm looking at Christian Christians what did I say the other day I said super Christians you got it's sad you got to define it now these days I'm like yeah they're super Christian which basically just means Christian because Christian don't mean nothing no more hardly Going to church hardly means anything. You don't know, man. They, do they really go? I'm like, how often do you go? What did they preach about last week? Uh, uh, nah, it's not really a good test. You're going to ask me. If you called me at 3 o'clock and said, what did you preach about today? I don't know if I would know. <laughs> That's why I'm like, take notes. So tomorrow before you go out of the house, you can look and remember what you're supposed to know. That's right. I'm going to go watch this YouTube preaching tomorrow so I can be inspired to go preach and embrace my place. It's time to put an end to the enemy winning in our life and taking victories over us that he should never get. And if we will embrace our place as rightful believers as super Christians then we'll see that power that needs to flow through us flow you will see people get healed you will see people get set free you will see people saved and you'll think oh man God's really doing it through me and that advance will bring greater anointing on your life that you might have even greater advance. This is not about growing a church building big. This is not about having a larger ministry. This is not about seeing how many people can be here or how many services can we go to. All of that is overflow. This is about raising up spirit Filled believers that say, devil, you shall not have my family or my home or my life. The blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony shall defeat you every single time. Somebody say, I'm going to win. That's what it's about. I want to see, see revival embraced in our city. I want to see the people of God rising up to the rightful place. You've read the story in scripture maybe. If you haven't, I'll summarize it for you. There's a, a master that goes away from his workers and he tells him to take care of stuff while he's gone. And when he goes, he, each, he gives each one of them a certain number of talents. He says, I'm going to come back. And then he comes back and he says, what did you do with the talents that I gave you? And there was one man that had few talents. And so he took them and he buried them in the ground. And he said, I didn't want to run out. I didn't want to use the one that I had. So I just buried it until he got back and I uncovered it. And, and here it is. And listen, church, 
I don't want to be the people that took the one thing God gave us and buried it in the ground until he came back. I want to be the one that say, we're going out and we're going to put it to work. And if we lose it, we lose it. He'll give us more. But we believe he is a God that can multiply. I'm not taking my gifts and putting them in the ground. I'm not taking my anointing and putting it in the ground. I'm putting it into the kingdom of God in every way and in every day. Because I know this, that God sent us here to do his work. And these talents are not just money. It's not just about money. I think money implies, sure. I'm not afraid to talk about money. You need money. You need Jesus more. Not worshiping money. Worship God. It's about all the spiritual gifts that he's given us. It's about our opportunity to seek spiritual gifts we don't have. It's about the natural gifts, that the skill sets that we have and using them for the kingdom of God. You can't put that on the ground. We got to be able to use our gifts to change people's lives that they might know their rightful place that they too can embrace, that they might be saved, that they might find Jesus, that they might find freedom. Would you just stand up with me as we close? I want to remind you that people respond to hope. You know, when I walk around and am just like normal friendly to people, like normal friendly for me is like super Christian friendly to some of you. It's just like when you walk by and you see someone, you don't know them and you're in the grocery store, you just smile and you say hi. Okay, I know that might seem like totally bizarre. Obviously, you get it. Thank you for saying it right. The rest of you are apparently very rude. Um, but, like, you just walk by someone, and they're, they're not going to say hi to you because they're, like, so busy with their life or whatever. But you just walk by them, and as you walk by them, you look at them, you make eye contact, and you smile, and you say, hi. And usually, like, eight out of ten times, they, like, take off their, their crazy face for a second, they look at me and they say, hi. Because people want to hope in something. They want to. But I'm not just out here saying hi, passing around smiles and being like, oh, great for you. Smile. I got a smile from them. That's making their day. I'm out here reminding them that the hope is in Jesus. Everybody wants something to hope in. You and I have something to hope in. So this week, don't just, don't just smile and say hi. Take every opportunity you can. You don't know what their day was like. You don't know who just chewed them out. You don't know who just died in their family. You don't know what hard thing they just went through. If they got fired. Listen, and they don't know yours. But they may not have the blood of Jesus on them, helping them through everything they're going through. They may be stuck right where they're at. hope inside of you and everyone lost, saved and if there's anything in between is hungry for that hope that's what they want I want to take opportunity right now, if there's anyone in this room that you haven't given your life to Jesus yet don't leave today and not have made a significant choice it's by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the word of that testimony, and there's no testimony until we receive Jesus Christ, not as a person, not as a prophet, but as our Lord and our Savior. And if you're here today, and you're not following Jesus for real, for real, you're here today, and you're not a super Christian, make today your day. Follow Jesus. It's simple. He will forgive you of all your sins. You say, I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Jesus is Lord. And then thank Him for forgiving your sins. If you're here today and you want to do that, I would love to help you make that decision. 
I want to pray for you just a second, but if there's anyone here that hasn't chosen to follow Jesus yet, on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to shoot up your hand. We had, I think, at least two at 9 o'clock do that. Praise God for them, people coming to Jesus. But maybe there's some here right now that need to follow Jesus. If you're here on the count of three, shoot your hand up so we can pray with you. One, two, three. Anyone in the room? One right there. Praise God. Was there another one? Right here. Praise God. Two right there. 